let us now discuss certain accounting entries in the different situations which arise while dealing with bills of exchange. Bills or promissory note. I repeat, now whenever we talk of a bills receivable, it could be a bill of exchange or a promissory note. It would basically, bill receivable would represent the document on which money is, against which money is to be received. And bills payable similarly would represent either the bill of exchange or the promissory note against which payment has to be made. What is bill receivable in the books of X, the same document would be a bill payable in the books of Y. <clears throat> now, accounting entries. First and foremost, what do we do when a bill is received? We may hold the bill till maturity. So if payment is to be made after three months, we keep the bill with us till maturity. That is one option. Two, we get the bill discounted with the bank. We take it to the bank. We need money immediately. The bank deducts a bit of discount and gives the balance for our use. Or thirdly, a bill may be endorsed or transferred to a third person. So these are usually the three transactions which, may, which we may conduct with a bill of exchange. We shall first discuss entries in the books of X when we receive a bill on which money is to be received. First and foremost, suppose goods were sold, the entry would have been debtor account or sale entry, credit sale entry would be debtor account debit to sales, debtor account debit to sales. This debtor may pay us cash. If the debtor had paid us cash, we would have said cash account debit to debtor, but instead this debtor gives us a bill, a bill or a promissory note, an accepted bill of exchange or a promissory note. When we receive this bill, the entry that is passed is bills receivable account debit to debtor. With that, the debtor's account is closed and instead we have a new asset now called bills receivable. Bills receivable account debit to data. Now let us say we hold this bill for three months. At the end of three months, the bill will be presented for payment. We will take it if, it, if we are X, if we represent the accounts of X, we will take it to Y and Y will pay us the money. The entry then would be cash or bank account debit to bills receivable. The bill is cancelled on maturity. Once the three months has elapsed and the bill has expired, the bill has to be cancelled. Money is received bank account debit against bills receivable, therefore bills receivable account credit. So for receiving the bill, it was bill receivable account debit to debtor. While encashing the bill, that means we give the bill and get cash, entry is cash account debit to bills receivable. If this bill is taken to the bank, when we receive the bill, the entry remains the same, whether we hold it till maturity, whether we discount it or we endorse it. The entry is bills receivable to debtor in all three cases. So when we receive the bill, bill receivable account debit to debtor. Let us say the same day or the next day, we take it to the bank and get it discounted. Let us say the amount of the bill was 20,000. The bill is for three months. And the rate of discount that the bank charges is 12% per annum. In that case, 
the discount element involved here would be 12% of 20,000 for three months. This would give us an amount of 600. What does this mean? This means the bank will deduct 600 as its discount charges and will give us only 19,400 against a bill of 20,000. So what would be the accounting entry? We have taken the bill to the bank and the bank gives us a bill with a value of 20,000 we have taken to the bank and the bank gives us 19,400 rupees. So bank account debit 19,400 the bank credits our bank account 19,400 discount that element of interest for the three months that is an amount of 600 will appear as an expense in our books and bills receivable account which we have given and handed over to the bank had a value of 20,000. Therefore, when we discount the bill with the bank, the entry is bank account debit with the amount received. Bank account debit with the amount received. Discount account debit with the amount of discount to bills receivable with the value of the bill. On maturity, on maturity, assuming these entries are being passed on the assumption that the bill is honored, Y will make the payment of 20,000 to the bank. Assuming that the bill is honored, the bank will present the bill to Y, Y will make the payment to the bank. And we need not be concerned with that transaction anymore. We do not pass an entry when the bill matures because the bill is no longer with us. The bill is an asset of the bank. The bank will collect the proceeds against it. We need not pass any accounting entry. Third option, let us say when we receive the bill, we endorse it to somebody else. So X has received an accepted bill of exchange. Entry is bills receivable account debit to debtor. Maybe in X and Y instance, Y was the debtor. Then X transfers this, endorses this bill, gives this bill to another creditor of X, say Z. Maybe X had purchased goods from Z. And entry would have been purchase account debit to Z's account. Now instead of paying Z cash, X hands over this bill to Z. So Z's account debit to bills receivable. Creditor account debit to bills receivable. Z's account debit to bill receivable. This is the entry on endorsing the bill. On maturity, after three months, when the bill matures, Z will present the bill to Y and Y will make payment to Z. X is therefore not concerned with this transaction at all and therefore on maturity, there is no entry. Therefore, entries are extremely simple. When we receive a bill or a promissory note, Entry is to say bill receivable account debit to the data from whom we have received. To Y, to Mohan, whatever. If the bill is held till maturity, we need to pass an entry on maturity. When we collect the proceeds against the bill, bank account debit to bills receivable. If we endorse, if we discount the bill with the bank, the entry would be bank account debit, discount account debit to bills receivable. Bank account debit with the proceeds which we get in our bank account. Discount account debit with the amount of discount that the bank takes to bills receivable with the full value of the bill. With that, there is no more bill receivable in our books. If it is endorsed to a Another person, the person's account debit, creditor account debit to bills receivable. With that, the bills receivable account gets closed. On maturity, we don't need to bother if the bill is honored. 
because the bank will take care, collect the proceeds or the creditor will take care and collect the proceeds on maturity. The other thing to be noted is what happens to the bill of exchange? Where does it appear in the balance sheet? Now suppose uh, it is held till maturity and we need to prepare a balance sheet in between. This bill receivable appears on the asset side of the balance sheet under current assets. But if a bill has been discounted with the bank, there is no bill receivable account in our books. Bills receivable account was debited and then it was credited. It does not appear in our books at all. We do not have a bill receivable account once it is discounted with the bank. However, however, it is shown as a contingent liability and therefore presented as a footnote in case of the balance sheet. So, if we take option 1, it is appears as a current asset. If we take option 2, where it is discounted with the bank, it appears as a contingent liability and a footnote to the balance sheet. Now, what is a contingent liability? A liability which may arise in the future on the happening or non-happening of some event. When a bill has been discounted with the bank, it is possible that the bill is dishonored. And if the bill is dishonored, this money will be deducted from our bank account. The bank will debit our account and take money from the account. So in the event of a dishonor of a bill, we would have an additional liability and our bank balance would come down. Therefore, when a bill has been discounted with the bank, we do not have a bill receivable account in our books, but it is shown as a contingent liability outside the balance sheet as a footnote to the balance sheet. So it's a contingent liability which appears as a footnote. If we have endorsed the bill to another person, again, as far as the accounting entry is concerned, Bill receivable account is debited and the moment we transfer it to Z, it is credited. Therefore, there is no bill receivable account in the books and it does not appear in the balance sheet. It does not appear in the balance sheet. Therefore, the position in all three instances of the bills receivable is different. If it is held till maturity, it is our asset and shown on the asset side of the balance sheet, it's a current asset. If the bill has been discounted with the bank, it, the bill receivable account does not appear on the face of the balance sheet. It appears as a footnote to the balance sheet as an item of contingent liability. If the bill receivable has been endorsed, then it does not appear in our books. Let us understand the accounting entries with the help of an example. Ram sells goods worth rupees 10,000 to Sham and draws a bill of exchange for the amount. This is duly accepted by Sham. Past journal entries in the books of Ram, assuming the bill is honored. A. If the bill is held till maturity, B. If the bill is discounted with the bank at 2% and C. If the bill is endorsed to Ganesh. So quickly, Ram sells goods worth 10,000 to Shams. We are passing entries in the books of Ram. Passing entries in the books of Ram. So the first entry for sale would be Sham account debit to sales. This is an amount of 10,000. Next, Ram draws a bill of exchange for the amount which is accepted by Sham. When a bill has been accepted by Sham, it is a valid bill of exchange and we shall now call it a bill receivable. So, bill receivable account debit to Sham. 
we receive this from Sham an amount of 10,000. Then, assuming the bill is honored and A if the bill is held till maturity, whether it is option A, B or C, these two entries are common. These two entries will remain. If it is A, the bill is held till maturity, there is no entry till maturity, only on maturity, on maturity, let us assume we get cash against the bill of exchange. Ram will present the bill to Sham and let us say Sham pays cash of 10,000. In that case, the entry would be cash account debit 10,000 to bills receivable. This is option A. What happens in case of option B? I repeat whether it's option A, option B or option C. The first two entries remain the same. That is the sale transaction and the receipt of the bill. Now suppose the bill on receipt is discounted with the bank at the rate of 2%. So the B option on discounting when we take it to the bank and discount. Now here the rate is it's discounted with the bank at the rate of 2%. This is 2% of value. They have not said it is 2% per annum. It is 2% would mean it is 2% of the value of the bill. 2% of 10,000 or 200 rupees would be the amount of discount. So on discounting, what is our entry? On discounting, the entry would be money would come in. The bank would credit our account for 10,000 less discount. So 10,000 minus 200, 9,800. Discount account debit, 200. Two, bills receivable, 10,000. This would be the entry on discounting, not on maturity. What would be the entry on maturity? There would be no entry on maturity. On maturity, the bank presents the bill to Sham and Sham will honor the bill. It is between Sham and the bank. No entry in the books of Ram. What happens in case of C? As mentioned before, the first two entries of the sale and receipt of bill remain the same. Next, the bill is endorsed to Ganesh. So the bill is transferred to Ganesh. Entry would be Ganesh's account debit to bills receivable. This is when on endorsement. This is on endorsement. Amount is 10,000. What happens on maturity? What would be the entry on maturity? There would be no entry on maturity since Ganesh will present the bill to Sham. Sham will honor the bill. The transaction is between Ganesh and Sham and there is no entry in the books of Ram. I hope with these, the basic accounting entries with respect to bills of exchange in the books of the creditor where there is a bill receivable is clear whether the bill is held for maturity, whether the bill is discounted with the bank or the bill is endorsed.